What is up, my peeps? Joshua Smith here at GSD Mode Studios with another weekly real estate tip. And today's question comes from uh, one of you guys, one of our great podcast listeners that sent in his question. And uh, it's around, I'll read the question here in a moment, but uh, just to give you some context of what it's around. Um, this is a part-time real estate agent, has a, has a full-time third shift job, and uh, is wanting to know how to prioritize his schedule during the times that he's able to focus on his real estate business. And this is something that's really important. I'm going to break this down and go deep, really deep into this uh, during today's real estate tip. But this doesn't matter. I don't want you to tune out right now if you're full-time, right? Because whether you're part-time or full-time, the priorities are still the same. We still need to get the same tasks done. It's just when you're full-time, you're able to get more of these done. So we're going to go deep into this, and I love talking about effectiveness, efficiency, and prioritization of schedules because that's truly one of the secrets to success in any business, any aspect of life. Now, real quick though, you guys, if you have a question that you'd like me to answer here on the show, sorry, I almost spit on myself. <laughs> if you have a question that you'd like me to answer here on the show, shoot me an email to questions at gsdmode.com. Look, I mean, I, I uh, come up with a lot of content for you guys and, and I love sharing tips and, and content uh, with you. But what I love more than anything, because I want to make sure to be able to support you guys at the highest level, and I want to give you what you want. So I love getting your questions and be able to share uh, and help you solve real problems that are taking place inside your real estate business. So shoot me an email, questions at gsdmode.com. Also, if you're watching this video on YouTube, make sure to hit that subscribe button and that bell right next to it, which will alert you every time a new video is released so you don't miss out on this great content. And if you're listening to this anywhere on audio, Greatly appreciate a five-star raving review. If you love the show, of course, I don't want anybody to go out there and give a five-star review that isn't digging the channel, digging the show. Uh, but if you love the show, man, that's how you could support and help us here on the show. And as always, truly, truly appreciate all of your support. All right, so our question again today comes from uh, one of our amazing listeners, one of you guys, Ben. Um, and uh, so again, Ben has a third shift job, just to give you some context here, um, but also is trying to build his real estate business. And the main goal is to be able to transition out of, out of his job to, to transition full-time into real estate. And you guys have helped so many people do this over the years. Countless amount of teammates that have helped do this, uh, as well as countless amount of coaching clients that jump into my mastery boot camp each and every year that I, I walk through this process and I've helped so many people successfully transition through this. So what I'm sharing with you today is not theory. So Ben's question is, is this, if in your world something happened, and you only had five hours to work, uh, meaning working daily, uh, how would you prioritize your day to make sure that you are doing the most important tasks first? Obviously, I have a startup, uh, I'm in startup stage through, through in my real estate business, um, and I've been first prioritizing my prospecting and follow-up, but I also know that self-development, sharpening my skills is very important, and even though I know that there are no real emergencies in real estate, I still tend to treat everything like an emergency trying to get over that, but it's a hard outlook to overcome. So great question. And first off, when, when Ben says, I can tell that Ben's a longtime listener to, to the show because you know, when he says, uh, uh, you know, there's no emergencies in real estate. You know, of course there are things that are urgent. Of course there are things that are, that are important, right? Um, but this is something I've, I've said on many, many, many podcasts where it's like, look, um, uh, most things aren't an extreme emergency. Right, that, that we need to jump involved with in that handle, meaning we don't need to be in such a reactive state. We need to be proactive with our time, proactive with our schedules, not in such a reactive state. I call it being a Pop-Tart realtor, like just popping up when anytime anybody needs anything from us. And we cannot create success being a Pop-Tart realtor. Right? We, we can still go out there and provide amazing, excellent level of service to our customers um, and to our clients, be there for them at a high level, still take care of the urgent matters in time that come up. You know, right? Um, uh, but the things that are urgent, you know, it's, it's like, okay, well, the, if the roof's on fire, okay, maybe that's an emergency and that's urgent. But why are they calling me? They should be calling the fire department. What the hell am I going to do during that time? Yeah, right? So um, uh, I just wanted to share some context there over that. So when you guys hear that from Ben in this question, you're not like, what do you mean there's no emergencies in real estate? I got to put out these fires consistently in my business, which we, we have to do from time to time, right? Okay, so um, if I had five hours a day, and truly only five hours a day, right? Now, now let's just be real here, though. 
I'm guessing if you're working a third shift job, unless you have two uh, a full-time and a part-time job or two full-time jobs, you probably also have some days off there, you know, right? So you might have five hours Monday through Friday, then you might have eight or 10 hours on the weekend. And look, you guys, it, it's such a cop-out when I hear people say, oh, if I'm working 80 hours a week, I, I don't have time for my family, don't have time for my health, don't have time for my self-development. It's such bullshit, right? We know there's 168 hours in a day. So for the first, the first step is dealing in realities. Yeah, right, we got 168 hours in a week. So if I back out, okay, I'm, I'm working 80 of those, let's just say I'm sleeping, whatever the amount of hours that you sleep uh, uh, during that time, you're gonna work X, you know, and so forth. Like I, I grind 80 hours a week. Um, I love working 80 hours a week. I just, I love to work, I love to build. I'm one of those freaks that just loves to work. And I know that's not for everybody, right? I'm not sharing this to, to try to convince anybody to go out there and work 80 hours a week. If that's not your thing, that's not your thing. I respect it, I get it, you know, right? Um, however, with, with uh, uh, working 80 hours a week, let's just say sleeping 42 hours a week, with working out five hours a week, that still gives me 41 or 42 hours, or I can't do math in my head, but 41 or 42 hours left over during the week to spend with my family, right? Um, so I spend a tremendous amount of time with my wife and my kids, and I still work a shit ton, right? But what, what don't I do? And you guys gotta understand what, what trade-offs are and the power of trade-offs and what trade-offs really mean. Every activity that you are doing, you're trading off time for something else, right? So let's just say as an example, I get caught up in a, in a, in a conversation that isn't a productive conversation. Maybe somebody's just venting or, or gossiping or it's you know, about some BS that, that you know, isn't, uh, where I'm not being able to bring value and impact their life. They're not bringing value and impact in my life. So it's really just a meaningless conversation. Right? Well, I can choose to, to be involved in that conversation for 20 minutes, or I can choose, but that's a trade-off. That's 20 minutes now that I don't have with my family in order my business, my health, my self-development, and so forth. Right? Um, so I can choose to partake in that 20 minutes and then trade off to understand that I don't get that, that time back, that time's now gone, or I can choose to get the hell out of that conversation. Right? And you can, you can get out of conversations by using you know, tactful approaches where you don't need to be a total dick. You could just be like, oh, hey man, I'm so sorry that you're going through that and experiencing that right now. Um, I, look, I, I, I know that you'll get through this. I believe in you, I'm confident you'll figure it out, but unfortunately I got a, I got a meeting I got to go uh, get prepped for. I got a phone call I got to go make. You know, right? Like you can, you can sideline and get out of this without being a dick. There's always a polite and a tactful way to do these things, right? Um, but just understand those trade-offs. Again, like every time you log on to Netflix and you're watching some bullshit show and documentaries are bullshit shows. There's very few documentaries and some documentaries might provide some motivation or, or so forth, right? Um, but like, look, and I'll watch some, some uh, documentaries, but when I'm doing those documentaries, I might also be building out a website or, or doing something that doesn't take, it's a busy work, you know, right, that doesn't take um, maybe stuffing mailers or, or doing something, a task that's easy to do while you're able to have that in the background, be listening to it and still paying attention to it somewhat, you know, right? Um, but what, I've, I've never watched a documentary that's helped explode my business, never one time, right? So, so you know, let's just be real with it, right? And then when it comes to self-development, so I'm kind of hitting some of these other things first. So when it comes to self-development, again, you guys, think about how to integrate time. This is what's so cool about self-development, especially audiobooks or podcasts that you could download, listen to audio-wise. Do that stuff while you're driving in the car. You're driving to and from work each day. What are you doing in that time? This is capitalizing and maximizing your time. Right, so I'm gonna use drive time, as Jim Rohn you know, used to always say, turn your car into a mobile library, right? So it's like, my, this is a Jim Rohn quote, but he said that his car needed two things to go, gas and an in a, you know, audio book, right? Or, or a CD at, at, during his era. So, uh, but also it's like, when people are like, oh, I don't have time to self-develop. I'm like, well, are you showering every day? Are you getting ready in the morning? Well, yeah. You know, right? Like, let's just all assume that we all shower and get ready every day. Well, what are you doing during that time? Well, I'm getting ready. Well, what else are you doing? You know, right? While you're getting ready, because those are, those are subconscious activities that we don't have to think about while we're getting ready, right? And most, most phones nowadays are waterproof, so you can bring it in the shower with you, put it on the ledge. So while you're taking your five or 10 minute shower, you can be streaming an audiobook. While you're getting ready, blow drying your hair, whatever, you can put in your he headphones and be working on your self development during those times. Right, while you're doing open houses, when you have down traffic, right, like utilizing that time to do your self development or your follow up calls and so forth. So, we always want to be maximizing time, right? When I was uh, 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 first few years of my career, when I was 
working with a lot of buyers, right? When I was driving to properties to go meet a buyer client or any drive time I had, when I was driving a tremendous amount amount, amount that most realtors are, it was number one, I prioritize it with, I'd, I'd get off my call list, right? I'd print out a call list with all the people I need to call and why I need to call them, and I'd knock out as many of those calls while I was driving. Right? And then if I didn't have calls to make that day or my calls were already made, then I would transition and shift that to audiobooks. Right? If I, if I was sitting there and somebody no-showed me or if, I was running, they were, if they were running late to an appointment, all right? I could squeeze in an extra call, whatever that may be. Right? So just maximizing the time that you have. Because if you're working 48 hours a, or 40 hours a week at your third, uh, third shift job or your current job, right? whoever's watching this that might have another job, you still got 120 hours left during the week. Yeah, right. Like you, you still you still can work 40 hours in your real estate business a week and go out there and, and still, in addition to that, getting your self-development, spend good family time, uh, uh, you know, get your workout in, take care of your health and so forth. Right. So we can still get all of that stuff done. So um, we got to get out of the excuse and just the bullshit lies that we tell ourselves of I don't have time. We all have more than enough time. Right? Time is not an issue for one human being that exists on this planet, right? unless maybe you, you, you know, have some you know, illness and you're against time in that way. I mean, for the most of us that are, that are healthy, that, you know, that, that utilize that as an excuse like so many do, um, you just got to get, get rid of that, those, that voice in your head that's telling you don't have enough time. Right? It's just a bullshit lie and a bullshit excuse that we attach onto and so many people attach onto. Um, all right, so and, and when you have that uh, uh, excuse or reason, just understand that almost everybody does, right? It's one of the top obstacles that I get when I'm talking with real estate agents about growing their business consistently um, here, time management, time management, time management. Well, why didn't you get your commitments done last week? Oh, I, I, time management issues. I didn't manage my time correctly, you know, right? Well, there's no such thing as time management. It's all choice management. How are you choosing? What trade-offs are you choosing inside your life? So I wanted to stress that. Then from there, that let's just say you only do, for whatever reason, you only legitimately have five hours a day to go out there and grind and work. And I want to make this to be effective whether you have five hours, eight hours, 10 hours, right? Um, doing your, because now we know that we're going to do our self-development, our health on, at other times, you know, right? Um, and incorporate those at other times. So then from there, I'm going to prioritize my money-making activities first. Now, I'm going to be there for my clients, but each day, I'm going to plan and reflect each day, right? I get through the day, I reflect on how I did, what can improve, um, how I can become more effective and efficient, and then I'm going to plan out my next day, right? And I find, especially in the real estate industry, as real estate agents, it's really important to do daily planning and reflection because if we try to plan a week ahead, there's too many you know, kinks that happen in our schedule, cancellations or, or uh, uh, new appointments that get set, shit that comes up last minute, and so forth. So I take it day by day. Right, so I'm just looking, okay, if I'm awake for 16 hours, I plan my day in 16 hour blocks. That's like I'm living 16 hours at a time, if you will, right? Um, so, so I'm going to prioritize, but I'm gonna make sure I have, like I'm gonna get my task list due for the next day of, okay, well, here's the files I need to be working on. Here's my clients I gotta call and follow up with. Here's, right, so I'm able to allocate, make sure I have enough time to allocate on those things, right? Um, but I recommend to follow the 80-20 rule at a minimum, right? Meaning 80% of your time, is focused on money-making activities where 20% is focused on essential non-money-making activities, right? And let me cover essential non-money-making activities first because that's a little bit easier. Essential non-money-making activities is anything that's essential to your business to keep your business moving forward but isn't driving in new revenue. So that would be like updating current clients. That would be like... Uh, 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 you know, uh, maybe you got to order a home inspection. You got to follow up with a lender. You got to, uh, you know, all those essential things to get paid on that business and get that business closed, right? Um, but it's not adding extra deals to the pipeline, right? So those are, that's nurturing business and clients that you already have. That's your contract to close process, listing input process, putting a new listing on the MLS, reaching out to your clients for price reduction and so forth, right? Those are essential non-money making activities. Money-making activities, let's just pretend or, or assume that maybe you have two deals under contract right now or an escrow, however you, however you frame that in your, your, your market. Um, uh, a money-making activity is something that is directly leading to you adding three deals or four deals under contract, right? So you're, that's, that's grown, moving the needle forward to adding new business and additional business into the pipeline, right? So money-making activities is going to be your lead generation, your lead follow-up. Um, uh, and so there's, there's three main or really only three, I should say, not three main. There's only three for, for real estate agents. 
And this is essentially true until you get out of uh, uh, production and you get out of operations, right? Um, that, that these three hold true for you. So it's going to be your activities that lead to you setting new appointments. So you, when I say activities that lead to setting new appointments, I know in our industry, you know, for whatever reason, lead generation, lead follow-up seem to get separated, which I get it. I understand they're, they're a little bit of two different beasts, you know, right? Um, but it's, one doesn't exist without the other, you know, right? So I look at those as lead gen, lead follow-up, let's just, that's number one, so that's gonna be the, the first money-making activity that you can do. Second money-making activity you do is appointment conductions, right? Now, appointment conductions means a buyer consult or a listing consultation, right? That this isn't, appointment conduction isn't, well, I got this buyer client, or I'm sorry, I, I got a, 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 a listing I gotta meet with um, to, to go over our home repair request that we got from the buyer. Right? That is not an appointment conduction. That, that is, again, an essential non-money-making activity. So I'm not counting that as an appointment conduction, at least for what I'm talking about here. Right? Um, uh, so your appointment conductions, so meaning your new listing presentations, your buyer presentations, right? or sometimes it could be a repeat listing presentation or buyer presentation, meaning that you are presenting your, what you do for a living. You're presenting your, your expertise. You're presenting you know, your value add um, with also at the same time pitching your services to get them to hopefully result into a signed client or you know a signed buyer broker agreement signed listing agreement right um the, so that's number two appointment conductions number three is uh contract negotiations obviously you got to put deals under contract right so those are the only three ways that you make money right so i prioritize each day where i got 80 percent of my day is going to be these these three things so let's just say i don't know what 80 percent of five hours is but let's just you know say that that's four hours or three and a half hours or whatever it is. So each and every day, that should be the target and the goal. Or I've got, I've got three and a half hours, let's just say you'd have to do the math on this. I can't do math, I don't have my calculator in front of me. Can't do math in my head. Um, but 80% of that five hours should be money-making activities, right? 20% of that five hours should be essential non-money-making activities, right? But those might change each and every day, right? There might be a day where, you know, like if you're doing open houses on the weekend, right? Well, during the week, you might have uh, uh, less lead generation activities, but doing more lead follow-up, you know, on that particular day, you know, right? Um, you might have one day where you're on three appointments. Uh, you maybe get uh, a listing appointment, two buyer consults, right? So that day, maybe you didn't do any lead generation or lead follow-up because that took you up your three and a half hours, right? Um, uh, and then, so, so it's going to alter day by day. And that's why the daily plan and reflection is so critical. So that's why I want, want you to practice the framework of 80% of my time is money-making activities. 20% is non-money-making activities, right? But you guys got to understand you've got, you got, and I, I stress this to my, my staff and my employees too, you know, right? Is you have the time where you're doing your job. So that five hours is the time for you to do your job. Right, and then so like let's just say I have an employee that that is mastering a new skill set, so they can bring more value to the company and and maybe get a raise. You know, right? Once they prove that proven that they're a value, and that value that they've proven uh, obviously brings in a return to the company, and uh, um, that's how an employee should get a raise. Yeah, you know, right. So it's like okay, during nine to five, let's just say Monday through Friday, that's when you're doing your job, when you're learning that new skill set. That's when you're gonna work on your advancement of your career. That needs to be on your own hours. So your self-development needs to be totally separate from this, right? Too many real estate agents get caught up in this. Oh, I'm going to the office and I'm working, right? But then they're watching a freaking podcast or watching a video, right? Um, and, and I'm not saying that, like, dude, I watch videos, I listen to podcasts, I read a shit ton of books, right? Take a ton of courses, always have coaches, always have mentors. But we gotta be very careful to not constitute that as working hours. That is me sharpening my skill set to work on my career. I gotta separate those and segment those out. I've got my working hours. I'm telling you right now, most real estate agents that think that they're working 60 hours a week or 70 hours a week, I can promise you are not truly working five hours a day. If you are grinding that five hours a day, right, uninterrupted, fully focused, getting shit done, there's no reason why you shouldn't be putting four or five deals under contract each and every month, right? Uh, my second top agent on my team, she's uh, part-time, well, I don't wanna say part-time real estate because she, she hustles her ass off, but she's full-time in the military. You know, she has a full-time job in the military and still does uh, about $10 million a year 
in real estate sales as a part-time agent. If you want to say classify as a part-time just because she has a full-time job, you know, right? Um, so there's ways to go out there and crush it with this, but she is laser focused. She doesn't fuck around, right? She's not in the office watching YouTube videos during time that she needs to be focused, right? She's going to maybe listen to a podcast or start listening to audiobooks while she's working out, while she's running, while she's cleaning the house, while she's getting ready in the morning, you know, right? And so forth, just like we all should be doing. So hopefully this helps. Uh, uh, if you have any uh, questions, you guys, like I said, make sure to shoot me your questions to questions at gs. I'm sorry, yeah, questions at gsdmode.com. Be, I'd love to answer your question here live on this podcast show. So questions at gsdmode.com. Also, if you love the content on these, if you, if you love self-development, if you're looking to advance your real estate career, make sure to check out 41 Tips with joshuasmith.com. There's going to be a link below that you'll see. Um, but you guys, this is 41 weeks of free coaching tips delivered to your email box, 100% written by me. Uh, it's 100% free, nothing being sold. There's no sales pitch. There's nothing, you know, there's not some walking you down some funnel, any, any BS like that. Uh, and these are in-depth strategies, you guys. These aren't just some kind of short one paragraph emails. These are in-depth strategies with scripts, with tactics, different strategies that you can implement in your business that have allowed me. These are, now this is theory. These are things that I do and have done over the years that have allowed me to become one of the top team leaders on the planet. So again, 41 tips with joshuasmith.com. Thank you so much for watching and checking out this podcast, you guys, or today's real estate uh, tip episode. Truly appreciate all your support. Much love to all of you, and I will see you next time. Peace.